Now remember what Bettinor did to Khan by playing subliminal programmed recording in convincing Khan that the voices at his back were telling him to go on the hunt and kill Gilgamesh and Kaidan. Well, since Khan ripped off the rap around his body, the mouth at his back are awake and being close to the vicinity, approximately close to Gilgamesh, Sila and Kaidan, the aura and the influence from the back of Khan overwhelmed the atmosphere, which propelled a distrust between Gilgamesh, Sila and Kaidan as they were arguing among themselves and almost coming to blows due to paranoia, which in all sincerity was generally being influenced by the mouths coming from the back of Khan and they were unaware of this. Now apart from them being under this tempestuous aura, the cogent reason behind their disagreement was solely based on the decision whether it is the right decision to plant the seeds from the tree of life but it came to a point that the argument became personal resulting into a physical altercation from Sila who blasted Gilgamesh in defense of Kaidan which infuriated Kaidan who can fight her own battles and need no help from Sila, which also resulted in her summoning ancient warrior spirits from the afterlife to attack Sila. And due to this, Gilgamesh mistakenly dropped some of the seeds from the tree of life on the ground. As he was about to pick them up, out of nowhere, he was punched on the jaw by Khan, and Khan promised to kill them all. Meanwhile, after having his way sexually by using the body of Betinor, whom Modius inhabited, in which he used her gravity powers in suppressing the Plutonian, he believes that the combination of their powers will bring great benefits. Unaware that Cubit was close by, Bettino, whom is being inhabited by Modius, noticed that he was unable to move coordinatingly. And this was because Cubit used his quantum jumper to teleport each part of Bettino's body into teleportals, which made it difficult physically for Bettino, whom is being inhabited by Modius, to use the gravitation energy of the body he inhabited. Helping the Plutonian up from his laid down position, a furious Cubit focused his attention on Betano, whom is being inhabited by Modius, letting Modius know that he knows that he is inside the body of Betano and that Modius had pushed him to a point of no return for the killing of his friend Betano, whom with her flaws had a good heart and that Modius was now at his mercy. But unknown to Cubit, Modius had another play at hand as he dropped the ball he concealed and trapped Modansi to the floor as it caused a great explosion. Khan was attacking Gilgamesh, pointing and striking him to the floor as he was encouraged by the mouth from his back to kill Gilgamesh. As Sila, who needed Gilgamesh's help in stopping Kaidan from attacking him, whom also was under the influence of the voice, Sila noticed the voices coming from Khan and understood immediately that these voices was taking over their minds as this was keeping Sila out of focus in losing his link with Kaidan as he asked Kaidan to stop listening to these voices and focus on him but it was of no use as he was ebbing away and sliding back into the afterlife so in order to save Kaidan Sila tried to pull and drag Khan into the afterlife as he begged her to let him go for her own safety but a stubborn Kaidan wanted to help Sila from not sliding into the afterlife as Sila told her that Khan was the one turning them against each other. Khan tried to escape and pull himself away from the grip of Sila for Kaidan's powers was still leaving the afterlife portal open. So Sila told Gilgamesh to stop her in which he did and Sila was able to drag Khan into the afterlife leaving behind a sad Kaidan. Escaping the heavy explosion, Cupid asked the Plutonian who Modansi was for Betinor, whom is being inhabited by Modius, mentioned his name. Before the Plutonian could tell him who Modansi was, Cubit got a blast from a not too stable but powerful Betinor, whom is being inhabited by Modius, and boasting that he was always a step ahead of Cubit, whom was begging the Plutonian to help him stop Modius, for he should remember that he promised to give him a second chance in sending him back in time to start all over again. Now the Plutonian, back to his mystery 
mischievous antics decided to do nothing for he was trying to prove a point to Cubit on his moral integrity of not taking a life as Bettinor whom is being inhabited by Modius was gaining his balance and overpowering Cubit by destroying his quantum jumper as Cubit continued to beg the Petonian and letting him know what is at stake for Bettinor whom is being inhabited by Modius wants the world destroyed and live side by side with the Plutonian in another world or dimension. Then Bettinor, whom is being inhabited by Modius, told the Plutonian not to fall for Cubit's moral integrity, that he once blew up a starship without a flinch, just as a show of strength to get information. For the Plutonian, in his mischievous antics, wanted Cubit, who was asking for his help, to say it in his own words that he wants him to kill Bettinor, whom is being inhabited by Modius and Cubit, who had no choice, agreed for the Plutonian to kill Modius, who was inhabiting the body of Bettinor. And without a second thought, the Plutonian used his laser fiery beam to atomize Bettinor, whom is being inhabited by Modius, whom immediately transferred his binary self into the body of Cubit in a way to take full control of Cubit's body. But Modius found out something was wrong in the deep consciousness of Cubit, for he was unable to take full control of Cubit's outer body consciousness. For unknown to Modius, Cubit was counting on him transferring his binary self into his body, in which resulted in Modius being trapped and locked in the psionic shields in Cubit's faculty. Cubit, knowing that he was part of the scientists who built the radioactive field that trapped the Elios, Cubit retrieved all the information needed from Modius' mental faculty and rendered Modius useless turning his packet conscious self into a vegetable. Now I want you to know that all that antics done by the Plutonian to Cubit was to fool Modius and as a team it was successful. While Cubit was digging deep into the complex brain of Modius temporal lobe, the Plutonian was also going through the lens of time of Cubit's thought, which was one of his new found powers. Cubit now have an understanding of how the radioactive field was built and how he can tap into the powers of Bettinor as Modius did for it was going to save Earth from the radiation as he calculated that it will become an attractor at the right gravitational gradient. It will absorb the radiation like a magnet into a black hole. But for that to occur, the Plutonian who is still busy going through the lens of his thought will have to carry the gravitation energy of Bettinor and and fly around every inch of the planet and this process will save the world for he has never forgotten the promise he made to him in giving him a second chance by taking him back in time to restart a new life at this point the plutonian was furious with cubit for when he was going through the lens of cubit's mind he found out he was being deceptive about the truth in sending him back in time as he grabbed cubit and slammed him to the floor and letting Cubit know that he knows the truth for there is no way he is ever going back in time for he knows that Malus is dead. Yeah.